the old days, um, I've had diabetes for a long time and almost 20 years now. And um, in the old days, you would make a log book and you would write everything down. So you would say, I had this many grams of carbohydrate and this was my blood sugar before and two hours after. And you know, that gets very exhausting. So some of the very simple things that I needed to know about my diabetes, it was easily available to me. And that's more valuable than you would think. I'm using a lot of different um, types of technology. Some relate specifically to my diabetes and other are data input that's a little more broad. I have a phone that has something called Homage and through Homage I can input a lot of different kinds of data. So I track everything I put in my mouth, <laughs> how many carbohydrates I'm eating, how many grams of protein, Am I full? Am I hungry still after I eat the meal? Did I eat the meal out? Did I make it myself? Um, so that is really valuable for me when I can compare that to my blood sugars. Um, then I'm also entering my mood as it changes and as I feel a certain emotion, I input it, which originally I didn't think related to diabetes, but in the end it does because diabetes and my glucose levels actually are really affected by hormones. Um, I've learned through using the homage and comparing the homage data to my blood sugar that I really, you know, shouldn't be eating pizza unless it's, you know, for something really special because I have a really hard time after I eat pizza controlling my blood sugar and that I really need to be doing temporary basal rates at least an hour before I exercise because I tend to have low blood sugar after exercise. and that certain types of exercise are really affecting my blood sugar differently. And so those are very basic way, you know, very basic things that I'm analyzing, but they're very valuable. The note system is really cool because I use it for things like I'm going to bed, my blood sugar is 126. I still have six units of insulin on board, so I'm gonna do a temporary basal rate of only 50% for two hours. And then that allows for me to look back at the data and remember, oh yeah, that's what I did, and maybe I overdid it because I woke up you know, outside of my target range at 250. And so next time I can adjust appropriately. The way I'm measuring whether or not these things are valuable to me is looking at my blood sugars and what my control is like. I'm inputting my activity level, so if I'm exercising, um, if I'm going for a walk, and then the phone, if I carry it with me at all times, can tell me, am I walking, am I running, am I driving, am I being sedentary? So that's very um, important because blood sugar is affected by how many calories you're burning and what your activity level is. The other thing the phone has is called My Comparisons, and it's basically a bookmark for a website where all my um, data is kind of put together, and I can ask for it to compare my blood sugar to my notes, or my activity level to my blood sugar, or my mood. So it's really cool to have all this data that streams to one central place. I think it's actually really rare. The potential for the healthcare provider in this technology is pretty overwhelming and very exciting. We're on our cell phones all day long. It means that there's more compliance and that I'm more likely to do it because I can do it in a really easy way on my phone, on my own phones. For any, any disease, chronic illness, you know, if there were a central place where the practitioner or family members um, could upload data and make it available anytime, it really allows for preventative interventions, which a lot of times I think is really lacking in healthcare, and a more comprehensive look at what is going on with this person and where can we help and what do they need. Um, so it's, it's amazing, and for all the technology in this world, I think there is a need for it.